here. Welcome back to the Mantry Podcast. I am your host, Reggie Milligan, co-founder at Mantry. This podcast is all about helping you cook better. And we do that with short, digestible audio tips and hints that you can listen to on the go, whether in the car, commuting, cleaning the house, whatever it needs to be. So the next time you get back into the kitchen, you're just a little bit more ready to go. So today... We're going to do something a little different. Uh, normally, you know, you've heard me chime in with a bunch of tips and hints and all that. Uh, I rounded up a couple great tips I found from food experts, different chefs, different food personalities that I just thought were really helpful. And so we'll go through uh, seven or eight of those and then we'll be done today. Uh, this episode should probably run six, seven minutes. So first things first, this one comes from Sean Brock. Quote, when grinding your own beef for burgers, grind in some bacon. So Sean is one of the most celebrated chefs in the country. He's at Husk uh, down in Charleston. Uh, he's also got McCrady's, which is sort of the fancier joint. Um, but he makes one of the best cheeseburgers in the country at Husk. And this is just such a great simple tip. You can either get your uh, butcher to do this. They'll have meat grinder if they're any butcher worth their salt. And you can just get them to basically grind up some bacon for you uh, in the meat grinder so that you can fold it into your patties. And this just gives it a little bit more fattiness. Obviously, it gives you that smokiness. And it's a really simple tip to make take your burger to the next level. Number two tip from an expert, Jeffrey Zakarian, who is the chef at Lamb's Club in New York. Uh, he's also on Food Network all the time. He says, quote, when you grill, pull your steaks out of the refrigerator one hour ahead of time so they can come to room temperature. Knockout tip. This happens in restaurants. This is the key to cooking foods and protein, proteins especially evenly. Uh, if you take your steak out or your chicken or your fish, early enough to bring it up to room temperature it has a much better chance of cooking even temperature throughout. Uh, what a lot of people do is they pull, let's say, their chicken breast out of the fridge, throw it right into the pan, and by the time the outside's done and burnt almost, the inside's still raw. So by pulling it out and bringing it up to room temperature, you get that key internal temperature up a bit so that when you grill it and it's nicely crisp on the outside, you got, in the case of a steak, it's medium rare, nice and medium rare in the middle. So always pre-pull your proteins out of the fridge. Number three from Laurent Gras, New York City. Cook with other people who want to learn or who know how to cook. This one seems too obvious, but cooking is meant to be done with people. You enjoy it way more if you're doing it with people. And if you can cook with someone, best case scenario, if you can cook with somebody who's better at cooking than you, you're always going to learn more. And the old saying, you're the mean of five people that you hang out with most. Well, you're definitely the mean of the other people you're cooking with. So if you cook with someone that has a little bit more skills than you, you're on the right track. Number four, Mark Forgione at American Cut. Quote, don't dress the salad when having a big party. Leave it on the side and let people do it themselves. I've had m too many soggy salads because of this. So this one, pretty self-explanatory, but an awesome tip nonetheless. When you dress, especially for a big party and you're going to leave a salad out, throw it around the outside of the bowl and then let people toss it right when it's time to serve. Number five, Masaharu Morimoto. Iron Chef America, quote, cook more often. Don't study, just cook. Love the simplicity of this. Basically, the best way to learn how to cook, get in the kitchen, cook as much as you can, be daring, take risks. If you're throwing a dinner party or cooking for other people, maybe not the best time to take risks with new recipes, but if you're just fooling around yourself, that is how you get better and the more often you cook, the better you'll get at it. And it's that simple. Anyone can learn how to cook. Number six, Roy Choi at uh, Kogi. You started Kogi Barbecue plus the Line Hotel. 
This is basically the reason for the food truck revolution. Kogi was sort of the original Korean tacos. He said, quote, to make a great sandwich, spread the mayonnaise from corner to corner on the bread. People rush this step and just do a swoosh down the middle. Every bite should be flavorful. flavorful. Now that's a sandwich. Awesome tip again. Corner to corner, paint that whole bottom layer of the sandwich or that piece of bread with the mayo. Too many people kind of they do exactly what he says. They they just, they do a little S wipe or something and you get these dry areas where it just doesn't taste that good. Food is about execution. And even when you make a sandwich, you can, you can do it right or you can kind of do a half-assed job at it. And so if you're going to put mayo on a sandwich, make sure you, you cover that whole bottom piece of bread. Seven, Ina Garten, Barefoot Contessa. Quote, for best results when you're baking, leave butter and eggs at room temperature overnight. So similar to pulling proteins out, um, you know, leaving your eggs out, leaving butter out, it's just going to help the food get to where it needs to be temperature-wise faster, uh, especially with eggs. Like leaving eggs at room temperature, if you guys have ever cooked w- eggs or doing an omelet or a frittata, or even scrambled eggs, and you're using room temperature eggs, it's much, much easier and quicker to cook great eggs when they come from room temperature via coming directly from the fridge. And then as far as butter, uh, yeah, cold butter is good for certain things. Like if you're in France and you have a nice baguette and you have a nice chunk of cold butter. But for the most part, room temperature butter is much easier to work with. Next tip comes from Chris Constantino. Amazing chef, he, uh, sort of a master of offal cooking, which is, you know, the innards and the stomachs and all the tripe and all the good stuff uh, you find in a lot of Italian cooking. Uh, quote, to cut pancetta or bacon into lardons, which are basically little rectangles, put it in the freezer for 15 minutes. This will firm up the meat and make it easier to cut. Love this tip. So with bacon or pancetta or uh, ham, certain fatty hams, lardo, which is sort of a spiced, cured pork fat. If you throw it in the freezer, get it nice and nice and cold, like not completely frozen, but getting towards the point of being frozen. And then you'd cut it into little squares or in lardons, in this case would be like little rectangles. You're going to be able to cut it very quickly and very precisely. And then when you go to make your dish, let's say you're tossing into some pasta, you're going to have these beautiful little uh, perfectly shaped lardons or squares or whatnot of pockets of fatty crispy goodness so good tip from chris there next one and we got just a couple left here matt lewis at baked in brooklyn quote invest in parchment paper for lining pans it makes all of your baked goods super easy to remove and it makes cleanup a dream no butter flour mixture or errant batter to scrape off sometimes the best cleanup is done through preparation and just like the tip of peeling vegetables over parchment paper so you can quickly bundle up all the scraps and throw it away. Lining your pans with parchment will save you a heck of a headache, and especially with baking. If a little bit of sugar or honey or whatever even hits that pan and then roasts in the oven for uh, you know, 10 minutes at 350 degrees, that's how you get all those like black streaks all over a baking pan. You know, So get a little parchment paper, great investment, wax paper, and use that every time you're baking. Finally, the one and only Olan Ducasse of Benoit in New York City, as well as many other acclaimed restaurants worldwide. Quote, to cook a steak, always start by cooking it on its side where there is a rim of fat on its narrow edge. I render it down so there's good flavorful fat in the pan for the rest of the cooking. I pulled this one because I've actually never thought of this technique And I think it's really interesting, um, basically using the fat from the animal that you're cooking uh, and quickly doing a quick render. So you always think of, let's say, even a duck breast cooking it skin side down first because it renders out the fat. And then you have that beautiful fat to baste the the duck breast in. But with a steak, it's a really good point. If you have a nice fat cap on your steak, like if you're cooking a ribeye, get the pan smoking hot and place it on the narrow side to render it out. Um, And I love that as a tip. And then you can go from there. Once you've kind of got the fatty fat, fat rendered into the pan, you can almost use that as an oil and 
then start searing the steak on the side. So that's a cool t trick. That's one that I haven't even used, but next time I cook a steak in a cast iron pan, I'm definitely gonna use that. That's it. Those are just a couple of tips that I wanted to share with you. Those are from people that are much more qualified than me to dispose this type of, dispense this type of information. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed it today. As always, uh, if you enjoyed it, share it. Uh, it just helps other people listen to the podcast. We'll be back again with more tips and hints. And good luck cooking out there. Uh -oh.